Hello everybody, a very exciting match for you now in the round of 32. This is game one of the series between Lamar Zale and Serafino. Lamar won Andy Davo's group and Serafino finished second in his. So we've got a juicy Wood Elf mirror here. How they qualified, I can tell you. Serafino is Italian, qualified through Wild Thing Studio. And Lamar Zale is French and qualified through the season five official playoffs um, as you can see Lamar's doesn't have a tree I quite like this build it's not quite as good as Kfog's build in my opinion he has swapped a apothecary and a reroll for a leader three a leader thrower and um, so he's, he's, also, he's actually swapped a dodge lineman for a leader thrower um, and he swapped the apothecary for this and he's lost a reroll so i think i think kfog's build is better but this is still fine and uh serafino's build is very one turn focus we've got a grab tree we've got a frenzy dancer and we've got a sprint catcher so very one turn focused um not really a fan of this build but there you go um as far as you go, customizations, haven't got the best cheerleaders, coaching staff, etc. But what we do have is a lovely light blue and white team and a lovely white and red team. So really appreciate the colours. Good job, you two. Much better than the game we just watched between two unpainted teams. <laughs> Starts with a throw of the ball. Oh, okay, going back, elf stall. Elf stall is not something I would ever want to do, but I guess I can see it in this kind of matchup. Like the, you know, the wood elf mirror where they've got strip ball is quite different to the uh, dark elf mirror that I find myself in. So 3D, his frenzy, gets him down and kazzes him. Okay, not a bad start. Hidden Mighty Blow on the War Dancer, of course. No Frenzy for the Mars. He's taking the more standard, old-school tackle. I think this is a good game to have the rings on, right? Because it's pretty difficult to tell the catches and the linemen apart, I find. The throwers you can tell by the uh, by the leaders icons on them both. <laughs> also, it's funny the the dancers are a bit different, right, to the other ones. They've got the red because they're white and red, and they've got white because they're blue and white. But that means that this could be on either team really when he's facing away. Oh, wow, okay. Catch a scoring threat instant. And he just walks away from the tree. I mean, <laughs> falling on his face, but he walked away. It's all like that, just an instant bit of threat for the thrower. But it looks like we're going to three dice him again. Tree into tree. And a KO. Okay. Well, if you remove everything you hit, it's a pretty easy game. Oh. Okay, he goes right back to the end zone. Interesting. And the tree bases the guy who fell over. Okay, now he's going a bit more pressure. Only line oars exposed for the tackler. Yeah, this is this is a much more old school strategy in the DACA, right? You have a guy with the ball back and then he makes a pass at some point. Or a handoff. 
and it's good because it just means you're out of range of like the strip ball dancer and stuff. Hitting the wrestle, a little bit risky. You don't want your war dancer to uh, get wrestled down. Taking it, this is the handoff. No. Is he going to hand off to a. No, oh, is he going to pass? He must be going to pass. Risky plays from Serafino. But it is a nice cage actually with him out the back there. Tree tries to do something, falls over, and now he's left on the other side. We might see a storming of the cage here for Lamar's. The problem is he's already down two players, right? If he wasn't down two players, this would be a real good time to like blitz and get pressure in and hope for the best. But down two players is not as good for him, but needs to make sure he can't link back up the tree. He is going in anyway. If he had those two players, this would be looking pretty good right now, I think. Rolls a one. Unfortunately, this looks too easy to uh, swing back around, doesn't it? Yeah, this is the problem with the tree. It's a bit rubbish. <laughs> a bit rubbish in the mirror, oh my god. Okay, it's not another removal. But you can still cage around its body and that. And hope it gets up at some point. Critical one in 36 with the ball. Doesn't snake. Yeah, it's only flings that can help them stand up, yeah. Well, it's the fling tree and like the gnome tree that isn't here. I don't know if the All World Alliance tree can get helped up or not, to be honest. But they need the timber special rule and uh, the wood elf tree does not have it. WWE does. There you go. Makes sense, right? Because it's a halfling tree, even though it's got Lona. Is the fluff. up which means that's exactly where the elves are going uh, well that and what uh, halfling trees don't have long like they, they, I think they're all they're all slightly different all the trees are a bit different different owners and on no owner or timber or no timber Yeah, I don't really like that they're all different. Yes, Tim Brown Woody trees would be broken, but I also don't like that they're different. Well, I think the idea of the loner on... Well, the, the thing is, right, loner on woody trees, there's one tree, right? But then on halfling trees, there's two. So they don't have loner. Except there's two trolls in a goblin team and they still have loner so it just none of it makes sense and it's annoying. No, all well, the alliance ones have loner, right? Oh 
Okay, so he's just going back deep. He's turn six, or maybe he looks looking for a strip attempt on the next turn. Gets a removal. So he's finger bussing here, but he's not he's not uh, protecting the back, right? He's not he hasn't got the driver in there that makes it secure. Maybe he's gonna change that now. Yep, leader out. Okay, so he's got that in the back. Yeah, now he closes it. This is better. This is what you need to do versus Woodies. So that they can't get hit you from the back. They have to hit you from one of these four squares and you've got your defensive assist in whatever happens. So this basically he's got to leap both dancers in, right? He's got to leap both dancers in. And it's hard because it's into four or three. I guess you can leap in there to cancel it and then leap in here to hit. So it's really difficult to... Uh, Strip him. So good play by Serafino. Well, <laughs> cautious play, right? It maybe the thing, the best thing he's done is make the three remo removals so that Lamar doesn't have enough players to cover, so he's able to get forward in this formation. Right? Like he just couldn't get in this formation if he wasn't up players. But you know, he's still done the right thing. Bunch of two D two Ds. Bunch of two plus dodges here. Not having to use a reroll. And a rush. And a four plus without dodge. Outrageous. Outrageous dice rolls. Outrageous dice rolling from uh, Serafino. Outrageous. I like the uh, I like the scoring threat here. And uh, not easy to get a leap in, is it? And in fact, he doesn't try. Wait, it's turn seven for him, so I don't really see the point of a scoring threat <laughs> if you're not gonna uphill strip the ball. Probably should have gone for the uphill strip, right? Okay, no removal this time. <laughs> Wonderful sound effect. Fails two or three KOs. Not good. Oh, wait, no. He fails both of his. But Serafino succeeded his. Neither neither team used to re-roll. So there's a one-turn chance here, but it's not it's fine, because obviously it's woodies, but it's not great because there's no sidestep or anything else. I'm hating the fact that he's using the war dancer here because the catcher is strictly better, right? It's uh, it's got catch, and if it dies, it's not as bad. Um, I guess that was to do one of the later pushes because he hasn't got sidestep. So fails him again. He's failed four out of four KO rolls. As Lamar's, so now he's got nine players. Not ideal, nine versus eleven. He could try to quick score and then hope for you know something happening. I don't 
hate that. Oh, you can leap out. Yeah, okay, you can. Fair enough. He could, he could maybe leap. I. Hmm. Man, imagine losing a dancer trying a one turn though. And the catcher does have catch. But yeah, maybe the leap. Yeah, maybe it was. Maybe it was. Maybe it was right. I mean, it certainly at least had a plus side. Yeah. So we're like dackering here. This is okay, really, in terms of you can dacker, kind of semi dacker until his tree goes stupid. I would have wanted to go back three though, right, so that he couldn't face with a tree. <laughs> yeah, the whole method is not is not the best way of doing it. It's funny, in about 2007 or something, when I discovered Fumble, I, uh, I was beating a Skaven player, like 2-1 or something, and then I tabbed out, and then I tabbed back in, and I'd drawn, and I just couldn't understand it, and then that's when I discovered one turning. Whereas now, with like the proliferation of the internet and stuff, everybody knows one turning, don't they? Like, lots of people, most people know one turning. Uh, it's like one of the early things they learn playing. But... It was like magic the first time I saw it. <laughs> it's funny how it's changed. Like that. This is uh, very risky here from Lamar's. Because he's got to stay out of range of the stripper, hasn't he? Which is pretty deep. And he's not far enough away from the tree. I mean, but you know it exists, right? Like, like that's the thing, right? Everybody knows about it. Even if they're not great at it or can't do it or brilliant at it. Like, everyone's heard of it. Whereas, uh, like, you know, I guess everyone on Twitch has. Maybe not everybody playing tabletop has, but... You know, it's like, it's so... It's so ingrained into like online play now and tabletop play, I guess, right? Like tabletop tournaments. But the first time I experienced it, it blew my mind. I know, I know, but do you know what I mean? Like, it's funny, it's funny that it did change that way. That it was magic at first and now it's completely standard. It is interesting. But yeah, I, I get that everything's changed like that. <laughs> Like cooking used to be people pass things down like parents and stuff, didn't they? And now you can just like watch videos of Gordon Ramsay teaching you how to do things, which is pretty unbelievable. Hello Jajuka, not bad tanks, not bad. An interesting elf off. I'm not a fan of Lamar's tactics here, but I get that he's down to nine players. And maybe he feels this is what he has to do. And honestly, at least he's not getting pressured like at all from Serafino. Maybe Serafino should have sneakily, really sneakily, like if this catcher and wrestler were swapped, you'd think the catcher wasn't in scoring range, right? Because he's only two in, but he's got he's got sprint. So maybe he could have had the catch that catcher there and then like, you know, sneakily, sneakily got him in. Wrestle on wrestle. That's the best, like if they've got a wrestler that you target with your own wrestler, so at least you're not uh you're not getting wrestled, you can you can imagine you're the one doing the wrestling. Okay, we're going in heavy this time. He's bided his time and waited for his chance. 
And Lamar's got to go for the score now, I guess. He's really just completely ignoring these two back here. Three. I, I, maybe the third was too many. Oh, it's not a thrower. He hasn't got his thrower. It's not a thrower. It's a dancer. Oh, well, now he's in... He's in terrible trouble. I was thinking he was going to go like three, four, five, six, seven. Lob it to this guy. Well, lob, lob it to the catcher, but obviously, with a war dancer, he hasn't got a pass option. So now he is in a bit of a pickle. Yes, everyone could could one turn with movement ten spring gutters. Yeah, I remember those horrible, horrible, godforsaken things. They didn't even have to be movement ten because they were just movement nine with very long legs, right? So it was really easy to get them. Tries the four, gets it with dodge. Okay, so he does have <laughs> Oh my god, the rolls. He does have a cage. The problem is he could go for the uh the dive from here, right? He can one D into two tackle zones. So this dive is very on with a catcher here and stuff. If he wants to go for it, I mean, he might not, right? Just frenzy and stuff. Oh, he could also leap surf it, but that seems... Leap surf seems excessive, I think, yeah. Just, just frenzy blitz and then pile in. I wouldn't have hated the ball sack, though, right? One, two, three, four, five... In fact, well, he didn't need a block there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He could he could have done that leap. That's uh, that's still a three plus leap, isn't it? Two, three, four, three. Yeah, there's a three plus leap into a one D, and then if he comes out there, I guess fifty fifty. It's a shit scatter, and he's he's in he's on top, isn't he? So just be conservative. Be conservative. Well, Calcio, my main reason was necromantic. Oof. Because I feel would I, oh he's double he's snaked, he's snaked. I feel Wood Elves into Necromantic isn't good for Wood Elves. Um, that's what I believe. And now he does get to do the surf. Double surf. No, oh, doesn't get it. Dub skulls. Pals. Oh no, passing twenty twenty four. So he does get a he does get one surf. He could have made three surfs, and instead he gets one surf. Can he score this turn or not? Jump! Yes! Keat is impressed. Yeah, so basically, Calcium, I expected the best players to have Wood Elves and Necro. And I thought Dark Elves are okay but versus both of those. But I probably should have just taken Wood Elves because they were the best. But also, I feel like my gameplay suits Dark Elves more than Wood Elves. Which may be 
Maybe that's true, but maybe it shouldn't be. Maybe I should have just played more elves in my life. But he's not going for the surf. That's crazy, isn't it? That's crazy! This is a strip ball war dancer. How on earth do you not try to surf it? And also, scoring on turn 15 gives him an extra round of KO recoveries. Oh no. No, 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 no. I think I think you have to surf the dancer there. And you have to stall it out another turn. Also, Lamas could score a one turn here. Oh, it's 2 nil. it's 2 nil. Oh my god. Errata, disregard. That's why he did it. Wrestle was more likely to tear, clear the tackle zone. And he can go up 2 nil. Would have helped if I'd known which elf was elf. <laughs> errata, errata. Errata, errata, errata. It was the wrong elf. Even though they're obviously, you know, one's blue and one's red. Errata. So he's trying to dodge in here. Now he's leaping to here. Makes it. And he pushes to there. And then he pushes to there. I oh, know, then he pushes to there. It's amazing how much better sidestep is, isn't it, right? Like, sidestep he wouldn't have had to fill there, and he could have sidestepped to there, so he could have pushed there. Like, it's just so much better. Yeah, there's a lot of blood ball. My eyes are sore, I'll be honest. <laughs> I've got, like, goggly eyes. Seven and a half hours of looking at this monitor. Yep, double ones. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So it turns out scoring there was definitely the right play. Blitzing with wrestle was definitely the right play. Just get the tackles on out of the way. Bang it in. Two nil. It's a win. Score line doesn't matter. I wouldn't say it's an upset. No. Um, not particularly. First of all, they're wood elf mirrors. So, like, elf mirrors, by the nature, I think, are more winnable by either side than, like, bash mirrors. Um, and also, Serafino's apparently a good tabletop player. And, uh, you know, he hasn't played bad at all here, right? He hasn't done anything wrong. So, um, yeah, that was... I, I mean, don't particularly like either build. I think Kfog's build is a lot better... Like, actually a lot better, right? I think it's actually a lot better than a... Uh, even though it's very similar to Lamar's build, I think it's a lot better. And Serafino's build is a bit weird, but they're still Wood Elves. And, you know, it's still pretty much, you know, dodging around, rolling twos and stuff. With the Bash Mirror, I feel actually like it's... I don't think it's who rolls tens more often. I think with the Bash Mirror, it comes down to the build a bit. And also, I mean, obviously it can come down to that. But I think there is a bit more, like in it the dice right because like an, a snake in the in the elf mirror can just lose you the game which is a one in 36 isn't it which is very easy to roll whereas in the bash mirror all the other two games i definitely fancy the bash ones to win anyway um there you go serafino wins he was the runner-up in his group but the mars was the winner in his group so on that, it looks like an upset, but it's very close and it is an elf mirror. So, you know, this is the thing. This is the thing. Even if you think all of the winners are better than all of the runners up, it's all very, very close, right? All, all the skill levels are all very close. So the upsets aren't going to be... There's only one or two that leap out that would be upset if they, if they went the other way. Um, and there you go. Serafino wins that. And if he draws the next one, he will qualify. So... For now, congratulations Serafino, commiserations Lamazale. Thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.